Uh, so this is going to be class 3 and your first session in class 3. So class 3 we're going to be looking at two different um, methods or elements of removing people from, uh, from their backgrounds. The first way we're going to look at it is by removing green screen. So for example if we're going to go to our project window over here and we want to look at a piece of green screen. So let's say this piece of footage over here. How are we going to remove the green screen background? So we can just have this man standing by himself on a transparent background and then uh, composite him somewhere else if you want. And in our second session, we're going to be looking at rotoscoping and that's going to be removing people or objects um, from scenes that are fully populated with an environment or a background and adding something like text behind them. So with this, uh, with this method of removing a green screen, what we're going to be looking for is something along the lines of this. So with this piece of footage over here, you can kind of see, so the background is completely transparent. I just have a shape layer with a red fill, so I can get rid of that. You can see that he is completely transparent. However, there is some, uh, some defects over here. And the green screen keying um, is going to be highly determined or the successfulness of your keying out of a green screen is going to be highly determined by the quality of your footage. So this footage is quite low resolution so it becomes quite difficult to um, to use the green screen uh, key light removal effectively. But with regards to uh, testing it out and trying it out uh, I think this is really good practice. You might encounter something like this um, moving forward onto your next projects and removing people from a green screen. So one of the first things we're going to notice is we're going to be using something called key light. So if we move over to our green screen footage over here, what you want to do is have it selected over here in the bottom um, left hand side within your working time frame or your workspace over here at the bottom. I'm going to go to the effect panel on top and we're going to look for the keying tab. I'm going to choose key light 1.2. So this is essentially how key light works. If you have the screen color, you're going to select a color using the eyedropper tool that you want to remove. So in this case, it's a green screen. This can work. Uh, this has the same effectiveness if you're working with a blue screen. It all depends on what you're shooting on, what colors your subjects are wearing, so on and so forth. So I'm going to click over here and select this green screen that I want to remove. I'm just going to make the shape layer invisible and I'm going to toggle the transparency grid on and off so you can see what's sort of happening. So what we want to do now is I want to play with the screen mat properties. A nice way for you to view exactly what you're doing is you can go over here by your viewport and this drop down is currently set to final result. What you can do is you can change it to the screen mat function and you can immediately see how pixelated this is because this pixelation is due to the quality of footage that we're busy trying to key or um, remove the green screen from. So what you want to look at is um, over here under the screen mat tab is going to be the clip black and the clip white values. So as I start to increase the clip black values, the goal is to create an alpha mat. So everything that is going to be blacked out is going to be completely removed from the piece of footage and everything that is white is going to remain. So by increasing the values of the clip black, you can immediately see that we start to get more of an efficient sort of a mask. I'm going to be looking at around about 38, 37. As soon as you start going more, you can immediately see that we begin to remove bits and pieces from our actual subject. And that's not the goal here. We want to just remove the background and keep him completely intact. So we're looking at something like this. Another thing that is quite important to look at is the screen softness. So we can increase this slightly. And what it does is that it just feathers out the edges of our subject. So if I remove that completely, you can see it's quite hard and you can get these harsh lines. So I'm just going to toggle back to the final result and you can see what I'm talking about over here. But if you look at the screen softness and you start to increase that, then it sort of becomes better and more efficient for you to work with. And you just start playing around with different types of values. So we're going to be looking at the clip white as well as the clip black values just to see how, how we can remove as much of that edge as possible without completely distorting it ruining our our friend of here. Screen softness. It's gonna play around with the rollback maybe. Play with the balance.
that back to normal. Screen deposit of white. So right now I'm just really just playing around to see what works, what doesn't work. Uh, trying my best to remove that background as much as possible. But if I start to increase these values, then you don't necessarily get a very nice, clean, prominent result like I'm hoping for. So what I'm going to do now is just quickly jump back to see what the actually quite similar to be completely honest. So what I'm doing now is I just want to see I've already um, created the screen screen mask of this uh, of this chap, and I'm just trying to compare it to. green screen footage that I have of him that's not really appearing for some odd reason. So that's quite interesting. I don't know why that's not appearing. Let me just try and import that back again. Okay, we're gonna just attempt this again. I don't know why that was happening like that. We're going to try it out again, going to go back to the key light, select our green screen that we want to remove, you can see more or less what's going on. And then again, just going to the matte values, we're going to increase the black matte, you can see it starts to cut away at portions of his hair. That's okay for now, the more closer we go in with regards to the black, so the more we extend the black, you can see the more it starts to remove parts of our parts of our guy which is not ideal and then we're going to just look at the screen softness just to blur it out it's a little bit of feathering just to make it seem a little bit more natural and I want to change my viewport again to the screen mat so you can see exactly what we what we have in front of us over here I'm just going to toggle the audio off because there is no audio it's just going to take up RAM and this is kind of what we have and where we at at this point I uh, don't want to do that too much. I'm going to go back to the final result and we can sort of see that essentially it was quite a successful key. There are certain points where you can obviously see over here the background is bleeding through a little bit. But the more we increase the clipping of the black, the more we sort of get rid of our, uh, our definition of our guy's hair. But it doesn't seem too bad. In fact, if you consider the fact that the footage is not the greatest quality, it still seems to be quite effective. And I can show you that this is on a transparent background over here. And clearly, there is a bit of issues over here with uh, underneath his chin because of the shadows, as well as over here by his pants a little bit and moving into his shirt. Because we are trying to clip uh, black and white, the luminance values by adjusting over here the clip black and the clip white so that we can have a proper screen mat of this man. So our white values, that's all fine. So this is essentially how you would be clipping green screen footage. Obviously it, everything is going to differ depending on uh, your footage, depending on what type of green screen, how um, how much contrast you achieve with your green screen with your green screen because if we have to look back at this green screen over here you can see that it's not fully green there is a lot of light variation which makes things quite difficult and there's already sort of a, a white border around our subject and this could be because of a rim light or a backlight just to give him make him more prominent but this turned out to be quite an issue to have this sort of white light around our subject especially with making a mask. As you can see, if I'm just going to toggle the effect back on, pay attention to his hair follicles over here, as well as how much we needed to clip off in regards to his shirt, just to get rid of this white highlight around the subject. So ideally, if you have proper green screen footage, you're not going to find that there's a whole bunch of rim light around the subject. And 
there won't be a lot of pixelation with regards to the ends of his hair so we can green screen him out quite properly but for an activity and just to practice green screen and the removal of green screen using key light this is quite a nice um, a nice activity and from here if you want to um, render this man out and then composite him somewhere we're going to do it through the after effects render queue i'm going to go into the render queue uh, again we're going to go look make sure it's on the best quality and say okay and then by the output module over here we're going to click velocinous and we're going to select a png sequence make sure the channels is rgb with the inclusion of the alpha channel we're going to say okay and then we just specify where we would like to render this out to and it will render out a series of images holding the transparency in the background and once you have specified for example if i select my desktop then the render option over here on the right hand side becomes available and if you click render it will render through so just to give you another example of um, how we can do the green screen i'm going to go back to my project files and I'm going to just import another green screen piece of footage and what I want to do with this piece of footage is the exact same thing I'm going to go to the effects to keying to key light and over here by the color selection of the screen I'm going to select the green and it's going to try its best to uh, mask out all the green I'm going to then move into my screen mat so I can see exactly what's happening and then under the screen mat drop down over here on the left hand side I'm going to increase the clip black values to try and get a proper alpha mat which is going to help with the masking quite well and I'm also going to decrease a little bit of the clip white so that it makes it more prominent and stand out and we can see what that sort of results in and again we have a little bit of fuzziness around our around our subject and you can clearly see that the quality of the footage is not the greatest and that also plays a huge role in trying to mask out our subject another thing to help this out is just the screen softness just to sort of increase that quite a bit so that's a little bit more natural and no hard edges and we can see if we play through this that we kind of have a green screen of our subject but what we want to do now is to we don't want these uh, these background sort of elements for now I think the mat's fine as well as a subject on a transparent background but to try and get rid of this um, this background sort of environment over here what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select the pen tool and I just want to make sure that I will be masking correctly so I first want to draw a shape around our character so that way only he's masked, masked. but instead of doing that I want to just toggle the uh, the transparency grid off and what I want to do now is to just go around our character our subject as well as everything that we want to keep so right now I'm creating a mask using the pen tool so to create a mask like this without using a track mat or anything along those lines so there's no track mat that's active I just have the footage selected and I went over to my pen tool and I'm drawing directly on the footage and this will immediately uh, allow After Effects to identify that you're trying to create a mask. So right now I'm just going over here, going all the way on the outside of the footage now. Oh, I did this wrong. Excuse me. I'm just undoing. I need to carry on with this mask over here complete the mask like this and everything outside of my drawn shape is now completely masked away so we can have our, our man running and he falls and lands I was going to toggle the transparency back on and get a better idea and I'm going to give it a red background just so you can have an even better idea of how this works so all we did is is uh, I have a piece of green screen footage over here that I dragged in once it was dragged in I then went to the effect I went to keying and I selected key light and with the key light selected 
then you go to the screen color, select the eyedropper tool, you then click the green screen that you want to remove. I want to change the final output to screen mask, so that way we can see all the black and white space. We're trying to create a luminance mat so that you can effectively mask out your subject. And from there, just to increase the contrast. And from there, just to increase the contrast, we're going to be playing with the clip black values and the clip white values to have a very prominent black contrast and a prominent white contrast. That way, our mask is quite effective. We're also going to increase the screen softness to make sure that there are no hard edges around our subject. And once that's completed, I'm going to just make our view to final result. All I wanted to do was then to create a mask to mask out all the unwanted elements and qualities over here along the outside of our subject. Along our subject. So what I did is, is that I had my piece of footage selected. I then just selected the pen tool on top and everything that is inside the shape that I've drawn will remain. Everything that is outside will be masked away. So I started over here at the bottom. I want to keep the mat because it's very hard to try and mask out the mat once the man is on the mat. I then just did a rough shape around him and then completed the mat over here by closing off the pen tool and that immediately created a mask removing everything on the outside that I do not want. So now we have a general man running with nothing in the background. You can obviously put some type of explosion there. You can become creative with it if you really wish to. So that is essentially how you then create a mask using key light and removing a green screen or background. There we go. So you just bring in your footage with green screen, use key light, play with the clip black and clip white values, adjust the screen softness. You can view what you've done by using the screen mat. Over here, you can change to screen mat. You can see exactly the all the black areas will be keyed out and the white areas will remain. The same principle applies when you create a track mat or a manual mask using shapes how we've done previously. And that's how you effectively work with green screen. Hope this helps, hope this makes sense. And peace.